In this demonstration we will show you how to automate about debugging via debugger scripting. You will see how to do tracing and custom tracing and how to benefit from custom breakpoints and watchpoints. We want to start the demonstration and explain the scripting basics by showing how to write simple trace via scripting. Now we are in the transaction SA93. It's in transaction for maintaining transaction. We want to trace every single statement of starting of the transaction SA09. We start the debugger. Here you can find a new tab script. Within a script tab we have a possibility to start script, to load script, or to save script. By using a script trigger, we can specify when the script is performed. We can either execute directly or after debugger events. By choosing debugger single step, the script will be executed after each debugger step. By choosing breakpoint reached or watchpoint reached, the script will be executed after specified breakpoint or watchpoint. On the right side, you see the script itself. As you can see, it is a normal ABAP coding. In the init method, you can add a code to initialize debugger script. In the method script, debugger scripting is done. You can also use script wizard to add scripting functions. We want to trace every statement, and so we use script wizard and choose write trace, statement trace. You see, this method is inserted. We start the script, activate debugger, and go back. We exit the script. In this area, display last trace, you can watch the traces and start the analysis in a separate session. This can also be done within the new transaction SAS. In the transaction SAS, you can have a look at all the traces which exist on the server. You can have detailed view on required trace, or you can also edit script, save script offline, not in the debugger. Let's have a look at the traces we created so far. We press Statements button. Here are the traces which were created at starting of the transaction is A09. We double click on the line and see it in the source code. You can also start the transaction SAS by using a built-in tracing viewer inside the debugger. And we go to transaction SAS again and see our statement trace. Now we would like to have a procedure trace of starting of the transaction SA09. We start the debugger. Now we are in the debugger on the script tab. We don't need to trigger a script at every single step. We want to stop at every stack change and add the entry into the trace file. So we need as a script trigger debugger event breakpoint reached. We create a new breakpoint at stack change. This new kind of breakpoint you will find in the new ABAP debugger since release 7.10. We create breakpoint at stack change. And go to the script method. Now we insert a trace line there by using a script wizard. We choose right trace, trace of the call hierarchy.
we see this method is inserted. Now we can start the script. Hand over control to the debugger. Go back and stop the script. We go to the standalone transaction SAS to analyze script results. We press hierarchy button. Here we are. It is a call hierarchy of starting of the transaction SA09. Now we want to combine procedure trace and custom trace. We want to trace all above authority checks which are passed while we display a program source code. We switch on the debugging and press display button. We go to script wizard. We want to trace again the call hierarchy and we choose as a script trigger breakpoint reached. We add breakpoint on above command authority check. And now we want to add custom tracing. We go to the script method and start script wizard again. We choose write trace, user specific trace. You see this method is inserted. Now we want to use the return type of the method and declare our local variable. We want to fill the value of this variable with our custom trace. We want to write in our custom trace output authority check happens at every authority check. And we write our local variable in the export. We check our script for syntax errors, do some pretty printing and start the script. And we stop. And we stop again at every authority check. Here we are. The source code is displayed. We hand over control to the debugger, go back and stop the script. We go to the transaction SAA to check the script results. We press hierarchy button and now you see different traces combined. On the left side you see procedure trace and whenever authority check is passed inside this procedure call you will find the icon of our custom trace. You click on it and you see our custom trace which traces our value authority check happened. We trace the source position as well. You can click on it and go to the source code where authority check happened. Now we will show you how to define your custom breakpoints and watchpoints where scripting. By using scripting you can define totally new types of breakpoints and watchpoints, specify precondition and so on. It is a real benefit which scripting offers to you as a developer in your daily work. We start with breakpoints. We want to create a new breakpoint type and stop whenever the program changes. We activate the debugger and go to the script tab. First we want to get from the debugger the current program. We use the script wizard, source code information, fast access to source code information program. This method will deliver us the current program. We want to use the return type of the method and define our local variable LPRG of this type. We want to stop at every program change and now we need a variable 
to store the old name of our program, and we define it in a private section of the script. This variable is always filled at the end of the method. Now, whenever our variable is different to the old one, we stop. When not, we continue. That's it. We just created a script for the new breakpoint type. Now we specify a script trigger. We want to stop whenever the program changes, and so we choose as a trigger breakpoint reached at stack change, because only at stack change the program name can change. We check the script for the errors and do some pretty printing. Now we can start the script. And we stop as the program changes. And stop. And stop again. We exit the script. And now it's up to you. You can enhance the script, specify any additional condition, and so on. Now we will show you how to benefit from custom watch points. Let's take a look at this demo program. We go through the loop 100 times and each time we append a line to the internal table. In the end we print on the list how many lines are in the internal table. We expect to see 100 since we added 100 lines into the table. But as we run the program, we see that unfortunately there are only 9 and 90 lines in the table. So obviously during this program someone deletes one line in the table. We try the following. We set a watch point on the internal table in order to stop each time when internal table changes. And we show the value of the internal table on the current desktop. We continue and reach our watch point. We go on and stop and stop because the program appends a line to the internal table. It's pretty cumbersome to stop at each append, so we would like to add a condition to our watch point and we do it in the script. We don't need this watch point anymore. We go to the script tab and load our prepared script. The script trigger is a watch point on our internal table. Here we have a description object of the table and we call a line count method on this description object to get the number of lines in the table. And then only if the line count of the table is smaller than the old one, we stop. That is exactly the condition we need to find where in our program someone deletes a line. We run the script and stop. We see set is 68 and the internal p table is 67. Here is obviously the point where someone deletes a line. But we don't see any delete action here. Perhaps x contains delete statement. Let's take a look at above bytecode. We see delete statement here. Delete itab. We go to the source code and double click on X. We see it is a macro. You see that our script with our custom watch point has led us directly to the point of interest without stepping and stepping again through the code and looking for the delete statement. So it's easy to understand that from now on you can customize the watch points you need by using debugger scripting.